Hey guys, my name is Miriam Jacobson. I am an integrative nutritionist and today we're talking all about why we crave sugar. In fact, this entire month is all about sugar, carbohydrates, hormone health, and metabolic health because sugar is such a dominant part of our society. Um, we tend to love it and glorify it and crave it. I mean, just go on Instagram if you don't know what I'm talking about. But we also tend to hate it because we know the metabolic effects that it can have on our bodies. Like we know that it can contribute to weight gain and inflammation and cause low energy levels and low moods. We know that it can disrupt our digestion and even feed cancer cells. But when we can understand why we crave it, we can become more empowered by it so that we can have a healthier relationship to it. Because the idea isn't to give up sugar forever because it's totally evil, um, because it is an inherent part of our society and our lives. But my goal for you is to understand why you crave it, understand your motives, so that you and only you can make that choice whether you want to be having the cookie or not. Because if you feel like the cravings are driving that, that response for you, then let's investigate that and understand how we can um, support your body on a physical and an emotional level so that um, when you want the cookie, you can feel excited to eat it and not guilty from it. And the reason we crave sugar, and I say sugar loosely, I mean, it could mean like cookies and candy and like what we think of typically like baked goods when we think of refined sugar, but it could also be like potato chips, um, pasta, bread, um, all carbohydrates are broken down into sugar. And so they all have a very similar effect on our bodies. And we are programmed to crave sugar because our brains love it. Biologically, we are drawn to sugar. And so it's addictive for a few reasons. The main two reasons are number one, eating sugar releases endorphins. And endorphins are chemicals that are produced inside of our bodies that make us feel really good. So if you are a runner or if you work out, you might know the high, that feeling that you get after a workout. Well, when you eat sugar, you get that high without having to do any of the work. So it's like your brain's like, oh yeah, we're winning at this. But really, we know, we know, um, we know the truth. Um, and the second reason that dopamine, that um, sugar feels so addictive is because it releases dopamine. And dopamine is our pleasure neurotransmitter. It makes our bodies feel really good. And it's also involved in our reward and motivation. So it helps to create habits, which is why sugar feels so addictive because our brains feel really good and our brains are like, oh, I want more of that. And so, Research supports this. Research shows um, that rats, they took rats and they cross addicted them to sugar and cocaine just to see which one they prefer. And despite more obstacles, the rats went out of their way to go get the sugar rather than the cocaine because it made their brains feel better, feel good, uh, more so than the cocaine. So this happens in humans too. And I have this little picture for you guys, an MRI scan. Um, and these are two brains. Um, one is on sugar and one is a brain on cocaine. And you can't really see, I apologize for the quality of my printout, um, but the brain on sugar actually has more parts lit up than the, um, the brain on cocaine, which is really, really fascinating. And so for something that's so um, wildly available in our society, um, and we live in a really stressful world, no wonder we crave sugar so much. And so the dopamine piece is the key to understanding how our sugar habits are formed. And so when we eat sugar, we already talked about it, it makes our brain feel really good. And so, for example, when you have a piece of chocolate, and your brain lights up, um, it's gonna say like, oh, okay, like now I recognize that chocolate and helps my brain feel really good. So your brain's gonna be like, let's seek out, let's seek out more chocolate. And the thing with this is, it's really interesting, is that anticipation 
of looking at the chocolate or knowing that you're going to have chocolate later or after lunch or whatever your ritual is, um, feels better than actually eating the chocolate, which is kind of, which is really crazy to think about. And so that anticipation becomes more rewarding. And so over time, what happens is when we eat the chocolate and our brains are like, Oh, that's good. We want more of that. And so you're going to eat more of that. And over time you need a bigger and bigger hit. And what can happen is these dopamine receptors can dull. And so we all have um, like neurons um, and synapses in our brains. Um, and this is a synapse and it has little dopamine vessels in it. And so when we eat sugar, it signals our brains to release the dopamine and it binds to these receptors here, which is when we get that feel good uh, effect. But what can happen, I don't know if you can see this photo, but um, what can happen is there's like little receptors here and those receptors can dull. And so dopamine can have a really hard time locking into the receptor. And so your brain thinks you need a bigger and bigger hit so that you can get that same response. Um, but what you really need is to resensitize your body to dopamine. So these are some of the main reasons why we crave sugar as humans. It's, it's just biological. It's in us. And I think that the reason it might feel like it's gotten out of control is because of the food industry, because of marketing, because sugar is so much more widely available than it was for our mothers or for our grandmothers. Um, think about how much the food industry has changed within the last 50 years. And so this, um, this is such a big topic. Um, and there's really just so much to cover. And so if you have questions or comments, please be sure to post them below. And I'm hosting a Facebook live later this month, all about sugar, all about carbs and to provide you with support. And also if you want to take action sooner than that, I do offer a 10 day self-paced sugar challenge where you can, I will post a link below and you can go to that link type in your email and then you will get 10 days of just like loving nutrition tips and advice from me. And lastly, if you want to continue this conversation regularly, get some inspiration and advice as you move through your month, make sure to join me on Instagram where I will be theming it up on sugar, carbs, metabolism, and um, I want to make it relevant for you. So please, please, please um, share your questions and your comments and your experiences. All right. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.